This is Eric Rutan of Cannibal Corpse. You are listening to the Scars and Guitars podcast with Andrew McKay-Smith. Welcome to the show. I have a chat with one of the most important figures in death metal to share with you. I'm talking about Peter Vibcherek from the Polish death metal icons, Vader. The catalyst for the conversation is the recent announcement that Vader is performing across Scandinavia and parts of Eastern Europe in September, and then in Australia and across Asia in October 2022. This chat, it covers a lot of ground. He discusses how the band exceeded through the pandemic, the re-release of the iconic De Profundus, which is the group's second album that over the years has become a touchstone for death metal connoisseurs. And Pete also shares his perspective on how the band keeps on keeping on. Over the years, Pete has become one of my favourite people to talk to, and this conversation is a great example of the reason why. To kick things off before we dive into the chat, you'll hear the epic Blood of Kingu from De Profundus, but only if you are listening via the podcast apps. For the YouTube audience, let's get stuck into things right now. Either way, let's go. We got there. <laughs> Mate, I've seen this many times, but the wonders of omnichannel telepresent transcontinental communication. <laughs> so easy today, right? <laughs> yeah, clearly. <laughs> Pretty much Mate. not possible like two decades ago. I know, I know. And then there's always these niggling issues that happen sometimes, you know. So, uh, but look, I, I appreciate you joining me for a chat, Pete. It's always, uh, we've, we've had a number of chats in the past. John Howarth, you know, John Howarth, of course. Normally uh, organizes them. Um, just sorry for that early time for you. <laughs> no, this is perfect for me. Believe me, I've got young kids. Is it? Damn it. <laughs> yeah, I've got young kids, you see, and I do everything. I'm a scout leader and uh, all sorts of uh, other things that I do in the evening. And the evenings are just horrible when you've got young kids, if you've got kids. They're just... Uh, I had, but that's that's the old story, and I think I already forgot how it is. <laughs> no, my kids are over thirty, around thirty now, so there's no, oh, wow. no kids anymore. Uh, yeah, no, they're, they're my mine are seven and eight years of age, and the uh, the evenings are just full of just trying to get them to do their homework and other things that they do, and I and I find that uh, conducting the interviews, I'm just not as present as I am now because mm-hmm. now nothing's it's just it's five o'clock so it's dead quiet you know <laughs> yeah, yeah the word is slipping yeah. <laughs> certainly around me but you yeah. and but me <laughs> exactly exactly I was going to say uh, around us it's probably as cold as what it is in Poland in winter at the moment we've got unbelievably cold weather at the moment you know down to a sort of seven degrees nah, Celsius nah, it's, it's not, no no not that bad it's not that bad. It's actually we we had some thunders a couple of hours ago, but the sky is cleared up pretty much. So it's pretty good now. Actually, it's it's around fifteen Celsius. So it's pretty okay. good. Yeah, that's that's not that's raining right. anymore. So fifteen degrees Celsius is uh, rather pleasant for that part of the world, I suppose, isn't it? You know, uh, I know it's summer, but yeah, as for now, yeah, as for nine p.m. in Poland in uh, June, that's pretty good. <laughs> Indeed, <laughs> definitely. Uh, yeah. So, look, th- thanks again for the opportunity to have a chat. I always look forward to catching up with you. Um, I'm on Tara's uh, Tari's uh, list these days, so she uh, she very kindly set everything up, and I appreciate that. But um, look, one of the reasons I was excited to chat to you is because you're one of the, if not the first band, you're one of the first bands that's actually conducting full length tours at the moment. Post COVID, I'm talking about. And you've got a tour coming up to Australia, okay? Um, and I just think it's very exciting, uh, the whole thing. So you obviously missed being on the road. Uh, actually, even the pandemia did not ground us that much like many friends of us. Uh, however, it was just not 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 a good time for touring at all, mm. for travelling. So finally we, we hit the road again, so... Everybody's happy now, and and of course Australia. So we you can't play that often. We wished so uh, it's about time to be back to bring some some Vader metal down there. <laughs> right, so we will. 
Oh, we're Can definitely we? looking forward to it. There's, there's no doubt about that. But this is effectively, this tour is effectively a chance to show off solitude and madness, I, I take it. Oh, definitely we will. But, uh, of course, it's not going to be just just the album. So uh, just because we we can't play that often, so we will bring some some more stuff. Uh, so the last album, of course, because it's a fresh, it's a fresh record. Uh, but we will bring some some songs from the classic Vader albums, especially those uh, which had a, like anniversary lately, like the Profundis or Black to the Blind. You know, some some of those uh, classic uh, Vader albums from nineties. You know, so I, I'm sure like we will do some nice mix of old and new, and uh, everybody will be happy. Sure about that. <laughs> Well, well, De Profundis, uh, as I mean, you know, we'll talk about that album, uh, I suppose, because look, the re-release almost topped the Polish chart. So that's what, 25 years after the fact, uh, went to number three in the mainstream charts, didn't it? Uh, you know, the charts, that's, that's business, you know, and uh, of course that, that that made us happy because it means that Vader uh, still oldie but goodie and uh Probably that's 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 one of those the best uh, achievements, Vader. Like in, in those years, like after uh, the next year is going to be forty years since Vader started to play, mm. started to exist, and definitely over thirty since we were pretty much active on stages, uh, also outside of Poland. So we actually uh, started to to live uh, like a re- like regular metal band. Uh, Mm. around 92 like after we recorded the first album that's that's pretty natural right we just Mm. had to wait a long time to have it finally and you know uh no uh just good to have like next generations of metalheads uh we can make happy with the next and next next vader album so like that's that's pretty good you know we're not not the band who can just enjoy the old veterans uh, who used to be metalheads uh, in 90s or 80s but uh, also for those newcomers you know uh, which actually look more like us when we are younger when we are teenage metalheads mm-hmm. today so that that makes me happy because like if i see uh, like a teenagers like with like Leather gen- the, the denim, like stews, like on the, the patches, like the banging hats, like in front of the stage for Vader. That means a lot, you know. <laughs> that means that yeah. we still, we still angry, you know, like with the music, and we still have fans just to, to, to you know, to, to to make happy. Right? What can I say? <laughs> mm. We do, you do know. make a lot of people happy, though. Yeah, that's. I'm glad you see that, and you, you see the joy. That's, that's what it is. You're bringing, you're enriching people's lives. You know, we are fans of metal, and uh, we do enjoy what we do for years. And uh, we're just a band which is uh, pretty active all the time. You know, and uh, we're not like. We did not give up for a season or something and then came back. So we're still active. We're still trying to give best we can. We still try to be interesting, which means like we we change the set list. And, you know, we try to bring that music people want to listen to. And, you know, I think uh, I just I just behave exactly like I wish the band I love should to behave now. So yeah. that makes everything easier to me. So I'm, I'm, a music, I'm a musician, but still a fan of music, pretty much. I know. Yeah, I can tell. Yeah, well, I can tell you. You do. You look like all of you in the band look like as they're having a lot of fun up there on stage, and you can't fake that. <laughs> no, I don't want to fake it. Oh no, I am you no know, old, but what can I say? What can <laughs> I do? You know, it's just like a time. Time is flowing up. I'm just trying to, uh, to to do the best, to, to give the best, you know, from, from my side. But, you know, the rest of the band, of course, much younger. And, uh, you know, like the lineup uh, still, like, keep refreshing, you know. Mm. Actually, maybe it's not something I really like. Like, I think the, the last the last lineup was the most most stable lineup in the history of the band. 
Mm. This was like a, over over a decade with no changes, which is pretty good. Trust me. But you know, uh, now now we have a new drummer, a new engine in the band, and uh, it's pretty good. So all it's just we just keep going on, you know, with everything. The band is still still Vader, you know. <laughs> Mm. Well, playing drums in Vader is not exactly the easiest job in the world. So, how did where, where did you go to source somebody new? Is it somebody local, so like a Polish fellow, or did you go a bit further afield? Actually, it is uh, local. Uh, Michael, uh, that's his name. Uh, he was trained actually by uh, by uh, James. Uh, you know, mm. James was was a drummer, at, awesome drummer uh, for Vader for last decade, over a decade. And uh, so we record like several albums together. We played, I don't know, like a, a hundreds, hundreds of shows together. But finally, he, he decided to change something in life. And, you know, I, uh, you know, what can I say? I, I want to have the band pretty much motivated. And to what happened lately, he was just uh, active with too many bands. Yeah. Uh, which made some problems sometimes. So we had to. Of course, he he's a professional drummer and a good friend, so he, he never left her with, with no help. So, you know, Vader's too serious name just to, to play like that, you know. So uh, we always heard if James could not play, with some you know some stories happen or something. So we we'll still get somebody who could replace him, and some sometimes the people did not even know that there's a different drummer, yeah. because usually, like they, you know, we, we play like in the clouds of fog and stage, like just huge like drum kit and things moving. So we just play, and you know, and uh, but now now we have a permanent member. Uh, the, the, the young young guy, and actually maybe it's better because. So there's like uh, more opportunities to meet together, to jam, jam together, to work together with songs. Mm. And with James, there was a little problem before. Uh, on the first years, he had to travel from England, which is actually not a big problem, but it was still a little bit. Then he moved to Poland. He stayed in Poland for the last mm. years. Uh, but uh, he was living in the south of Poland. I live in the north of Poland. And... Uh, the rehearsal room, I, I just built it actually from scratch and uh, mm. it's, it's by my house. So uh, it's, it's, it's much easier just for Michael, for the new drummer, just to visit me pretty regularly, just to jam together. It's still fun. Something we did not do for decades, you know, yeah. before. No, <laughs> still fun. Enough. Yeah, so so you got the new fella, and James has joined Decapitated, I think, full time, if I'm mistaken. Um, yeah, so these things, you know, it's, it, these things. Happen, yes, he, not 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 only because he's still he's still playing as a session, like a life like drummer for for Bill Figor or some other bands, you know. And but yeah, Decapitated is probably his his main band at the moment. I just really like to uh, to play in a band, in a team, uh, where, where everything just cooperates together and the people cooperate together. That makes sense. You know? And, the, the, you know, it's like I, I never, ever tried to work with somebody who was not enough motivated to be in a band. So no problems, no, no problems uh, actually can t- change that, you know, and... Uh, mm. Actually, I, I had seen, since uh, that situation with Doc, you know, like years, years ago, mm. uh, I'm not really afraid to change to people. I, I do not like that, you know, because a stable lineup means uh, easy work, you know, and uh, the understanding each other. But mm. if I have to, then all right, it's just... You know, it's not really easy to be invader, to play invader. Not just, uh, I'm not talking just about like uh, musical abilities. I'm talking more about the time to spend, to your life, to spend actually on the road, you know, on, on tours, you know. Uh, you know, we play average 100 shows every year uh, since 93. So it's a lot, you know. If you add, it's like some some jamming, if you add uh, recording sessions, some, you know, other things that means like half a beer, actually you're somewhere not home. So not, 
not everybody can stand it, you know. So this is so we're a professional band, and that's the only job we have. So we we active, you know, and do we we never just like uh, turn into this situation, which is just easy to us, mm. you know. So we're flexible bands. That's thing. So maybe that's why um, in in the bad times, the pandemic times, we still were able to play in some clubs, not just like the big venues. You know, some bands just gave up. Because the business, the business said like they shouldn't, but we don't care about that. We love small places as well because the people are happy. And sometimes it's even like, personally, I even like it better because yeah. I feel, I feel the show. If you play on the big stages, like for thousands of people in the fast food balls, it's okay. It's good for, for, for promotion. It's, it's good to meet some friends from other bands, you know, just have fun after the show. For us. But all in all, you can't feel you know, the, the, the madness, you know, of the show, because mm. you see the mass of people. And, uh, you know, I, as I said, I, I do prefer the small place where, where I can feel people, you know, can smell the sweat and blood, you know, <laughs> from the <laughs> show. And uh, that's metal. That's why the motivation and the people, it's like in the military, you have to, you know, trust each other, like each other, you know, and yes. that's the, that's the, that's the solution, you know, to, to, to be a band, you know, I think. Mm. Yeah. And, and look, it sounds, you've already addressed this a little bit, but it sounds like the pandemic didn't stop the band at all from doing what you needed to do. Obviously yeah. you, you, you weren't <laughs> able to, yeah, it just, a lot of bands that I've spoken to though, like especially the American bands, I've got to say, who were used to traveling overseas, they told me that they were basically looking for construction jobs, some of them. They were basically in a position where if they didn't find a source of income in the immediate future, they were going to have to give up music altogether. These were some big names. So uh, uh, I think his name is, is it Aaron Lewis um, from, oh, God, it's not going to make sense now, Carnifex. The singer from Carnifex really went into a lot of detail with me about it all, about the how the finances were affecting the group. But for you guys, you just powered on through uh one thing i just explained like before so we were like flexible uh, the second thing is um uh maybe we did not just give up like that and any any situation we gave us a opportunity to play on stage uh it was not a problem you know of course in in, in late 20s and uh, the early 21 I was just some places uh, with very, very restricted places. So you had like a big venue, but there was just people which were like, it's like sitting, like in Germany, sitting, wearing masks and, you know, God, like, yeah. this was mm. like, like one person's every two meters, you know, radius around. It, yeah. I know it, it, as for metal, it's pretty stupid, right? But, uh, this is still better than nothing, you know, and uh, we did not really like that, but we wanted to do anything. You know, remember that the band, actually, like us, you know, we still can can survive bad times uh, a little bit from from some private things, you know, like Spider or, or James, they, they gave, like, some, less, some uh, internet lessons, the drums and mm -hmm. guitars, just a little money, you know, just to, just to fulfill, you know, the situation. And uh, I know no, my uh, my wife and daughter, they had like a cattery, the personal like cattery. So I, oh, yeah. I just turned a little bit to, ha to help them <laughs> in those times. And so actually, uh, that's, that's, that's good business as well. It's like Katie Skeeties. Mm -hmm. And, uh, <laughs> uh, you know, this the Vader store, you know, like uh, the fans, they turned a little bit into, you know, uh, collections. So like all these the, the, the business, the selling, you know, all these gadgets, T-shirts, the special editions, you know, that's that was working yeah. pretty good. So that that was a little bit that's pretty fair for band because it's still, you know, the music still uh, still uh, on, uh, under the name Vader, you know. Speaking mm -hmm. of which, and uh, but uh, the worst is for a crew, you know, for for guitar like drum tech for old people who uh, who work hard and on tour to make your show good as good yeah. as possible 
they in a gray, you know, gray area. Like, you know, people uh, usually do not see them, but without them, it would be really hard to do a really good show like at all, just with all this, you know what I mean? And these people actually had the biggest, the biggest problem on Pandemia because they lost, you know, many of really good friends, they just changed job and they did not get back anymore after uh, Pandemia was over. So uh, this is really problem, you know, uh, today with uh, good crew people, you know, because those those really experienced, they just gone, many of them gone, and not too many survived the problem, or mm. not too many just came back, you know, to the old business. And uh, but so we are trying just to feed them, you know, <laughs> give a little money just just to work together, just to have the crew uh, active after pandemic, because we knew that it's going to be over. It's a matter of time, you know. So, yes. so finally, finally, we can just work like uh, like we did before, and uh, to stay pretty active, you know, mm. during yeah, the pandemic and, and after pandemic. Yeah, indeed. Yeah, we you had a live album come out recently. I think it was was it a bootleg album, the live in Texas album. Uh, the Deep oh, Profundus that's, Room. That's, you know, that's that's something uh, something additional you know I, I wouldn't call that something official even if it's more official than unofficial but you know as i say like i'm collector so i i have like like a tons of of of, of slayer or priest saxon bootlegs and sometimes they're bad quality and you know expensive so mm-hmm. so we try to make something like uh, connected with official store it's of course it's limited because it's just just for hard, diehard fans, of course. Yeah, and uh, we we try to you know to keep as good quality as possible. Of course, this is a bootleg. So sometimes the, the first one we the, we made uh, uh, was pretty good, and uh, it's just different. But mm. you know, uh, this is all about bootlegs. You know, they're just different. Some sound mm. good, some other. But so. Uh, First of all, and the, the, the main part of of uh, of this this time, this period was Soldier Madness, the new album, which unfortunately went out during the pandemic, so in uh, in May uh, two thousand twenty. Mm-hmm. But you know, it, but but we still, you know, we still remember that this is a new album, and it's not new anymore. It's the two years old, but we, we never actually played this. This album enough uh, on stages, you know, on tour. Mm. So to me, it's still fresh. That's why I'm not like many other bands. I'm not just turning to just. I'm not like push myself to record a new album, just to new songs. If those, if Solid Madness, which is pretty good album, good reviews, you know, and mm. it still needs time, you know, just to present you know to just yeah to play well that's metal thrives in the live arena and that's where songs come to life but but i mentioned up top you know the the, the majesty of deep profundus it's it's without question uh, as a death metal connoisseur it's in the top 10 i mean i know this lists are pointless but anyway i'll, I'll make the point the top 10 it's in well within the top 10 of uh, death metal albums ever recorded up there with altars of madness uh slowly we brought this sort of thing because of its enduring influence and it's the impression that it has on people who come into the genre something else that i've noticed about it though is that i was sharing the uh, people would ask me okay which is a good death metal song to listen to and i'd say blood of kingu and i'd send them the new video that yeah. came out and I noticed that it started to cross over into people who wouldn't touch death metal at all. And that's very, very rare. Uh, very few bands. I think Morbid Angel did it with Covenant. That might be it. But have you had that feedback before that your music crosses over to people who otherwise wouldn't touch death metal? You know, metal actually, you know, metal became something uh, something more, not just elite music anymore. And I think uh, that was, that was cross influences. I mean, uh, the metal music, even extreme metal, started to influence the people who never listened to metal and uh, the opposite way. And uh, so much uh, the music, which was non-metal, uh, started to uh, influence the metal, extreme metal people and musicians, pretty much as 
as well. And, you know, the effect uh, today you have the metal, which is, you know, so huge variety of different music, like, and trust me, so many metal bands uh, playing today wouldn't be even cold metal in the 90s or 80s. Mm. It's that different. But the steel cold metal, they just added the different prefix <laughs> before metal. And uh, so we have the variety. You know, that's, uh, I'm old school man, metal fan. So, of course, I, I, I focus my point, my point of interest into, into or the classic metal which is pretty aggressive or classic classic metal which is like saxon priest old mm. what influenced me at the beginning what made me a metalhead uh, but uh, sometimes sometimes I'm, I'm pretty much open to uh, like different styles and different music and uh, i'm pretty sure that without this vader uh, even vader with all this extremity would wouldn't be that you know would, would be different you know there wouldn't be some some songs which were uh, which which were different compared to all these, uh, let's say, four albums uh, mm. composed uh, in nineties. You know, and uh, the same metal. If metal wouldn't wouldn't be that huge, and uh, and uh, definitely all these huge careers like like Metallica, just mm. for example. Uh, or, or Iron Maiden. So uh, the whole pop music today and everything would be different. I think. You know, if you see, if you just take a look on what happened in 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 a, in a metal business, it also did metal influenced a lot. You know what happened? You know, in the music, especially guitars. You know, heavy guitars. You know, and all these things. Like, and it's, it's not maybe that fast and brutal, but you know, that that is you know different and that's still still underground and will be underground i think because it's just not everybody can just get through the noise you know and and uh, this is just safe for mental health for crazy people like yeah. me and uh but there's still like a different kind of 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 music which is just influenced but metal sound or well, maybe that, that that's that's easy to explain but metal sound uh, to make everything more interesting. So the music influence itself through the years, through the case, through the ages, I think, you know, it's pretty good. That's natural yeah. evolution. Yeah, yeah. No, I just find it interesting that you, you've, I don't know how else to say it, but death metal has got to a point where it's almost dad music. It's really strange to see uh, it evolve. It's, it's, you know, people my age, we're right into it still as we were when we were 17 and 18. <laughs> I don't know death metal, death metal as a death metal. You mean as a as a you know a, a name you know of a genre? It's yeah. it's maybe it was maybe over popular in nineties, and uh, that's why uh, so many fans of the music they thought that this is going down, going down, or even dead. It's not really true. It's just uh, this music had you know, uh, had to evolve and was evolving in, in its own way. And uh, we still have just the, the, the fruits of this. I don't know how to explain it. But of course, the, and I think that the Vader, uh, Vader still uh, might have this, this, this uh, respect from, from different generations of metal fans because we still trying to be Vader, you know, we like, mm. I know we, if I can compare Vader, so we like ACDC, you know, through the ages, but you see a new album, see something, but they see the same music and still hear that this is ACDC. They, they, they never tried to be different band. They never tried to explain that they can play different music. They can, you know, do something different. No, they don't need it. Same mm. Vader, we do what we do best. We do what people wanted to hear from Vader. And uh, that made us uh, different for new generations. <laughs> you know, yeah. some old guys maybe just they they turn into some older things on the music. But uh, even if Vader was not changing in that you know that much, the world around us was changing so fast, maybe even faster. Yeah. So the music is still kind of fresh for many. 
I think. I believe. <laughs> no, no, I'm hearing you. So uh, yeah. death metal, death metal, look around. Death metal, uh, death metal got a new generation and uh, the new bands uh, with way more technical abilities. They still trying to be extreme and uh, in a in a classical way. I mean, speed blast beats, you know, like crawling and the heavy sound. So, so they kept the spirit of death metal, and yeah. in a new way, of course. But this is also evolution. This is pretty natural, in my opinion. It's pretty mm-hmm. good. Yeah, I agree. I, I can't stand it when people say there are no good bands around. It's ridiculous. I mean, you just got to look at your label, Nuclear Blast. Uh, Napalm, all these labels are bringing out so many fantastic new bands that are blending right. death metal and world music and, you know, there's always been the death and black metal blend, but there are so many killer bands out there that are launching debuts. There's too many to mention, but people often don't dive a bit deeper. And and I've got to say one thing, I've, I've been a bit critical of Spotify in the past, but I must say that it does have a habit of bringing new artists to light through the random play feature. I don't know what it's called, uh, Spotify Play or whatever it might be. Do you, do you have a view on Spotify <laughs> and the role of Spotify? You know, Spotify, I, I use this, uh, actually, same like I used the radio in the 80s, you know, in Poland. Poland was uh, behind the Iron Curtain and, mm. uh, you know, the regular, they, they, were, they were not, record stores, the regular record stores, and uh, something like uh, the records, vinyls, that was yet before CD uh, hit, you know, the world as a new format. It was just not that available and was just too expensive. So the radio stations uh, in Poland, uh, of course, uh, forget about metal music so much popular in Polish, like uh, ex communist country, not it's not like that, but there were some uh, people uh, who were able to present the albums uh, in some authors, like, like uh, the radio stations, you know, and some uh, how do, the programs, you know, and yeah. yeah, that was not forbidden, that was totally illegal, of course, because they were like presenting the whole album with the titles, everything you could record it. But you know, that was different times. The Poland was behind the Iron Curtain, so nobody actually gave a fuck about that, right? Mm-hmm. But for us, for Metal Hats, that was the only source to have something which going on in the world, in the metal world, right? And the other source was uh, just a private connection with some families living outside of Poland. You know, many, uh, many uh, Polish immigrants, they were living in you know Germany, Sweden, or mm-hmm. US. Uh, also in Australia, Australia. Right? but Lots the, in Australia. That just, but yeah. yeah, but that was just too too far and too expensive to ship. You know, you know, records to Poland. Yeah. So actually, those uh, those families from Germany or or US like was just closer, and that was unstop, un, you know, unstoppable source of the music. But the only problem was uh, we had to travel, you know, across the country just to tape something. You know, just to copy some some albums, some tapes, you know, of course, or something like that, just to have it and just to present it to the other friends, you know. So we are just like, we're taping, we just let tape for the others and that was like the analog internet, you know, and tape trading, all these things. Yeah, that was the only source. So Spotify to me today, it's something like that. It's like a demo, you know, and uh, I'm, I'm sure that for many like me, if you really like it, you still need to uh, to have uh, the solid, you know, copy, <laughs> which is like CD or vinyl, like me, yeah. or something else. So, whatever. But uh, so this is more like listening something, like it or not, selection, mm. pretty fun. And uh, I'd be like a hypocrite if if I would say like oh, this is just stealing or something. Nah, nah this is just. I'm happy if somebody is listening to Vader for free, because that's okay. You know, it's, it's, I'm still, you know, actually as a musician, I live from mostly, mostly from, from playing shows for touring, from, from a merch, you know, and all these things. And mm-hmm. this is pretty far, you know, people paying for watching us, for listening to us, for enjoying the show. And, uh, and the records, you know, and uh, something which was like the main part of of the money for the bands, 
uh, I think the, this is a problem for, for record companies at the moment, but not, not that big problem because the, uh, the collection market raised up so much. So uh, the, the record companies, the record labels, they just product like hundreds of different you know, colors and things. And yeah. they do exist. And I don't think they, they you know, complain about what's going on. It's just change. You know, like internet changed the whole world. You know, the Spotify, this is a part of that, I think. And we have to adopt, you know, to the new situation. And that's, that's it. And like, who can adopt, who are able to adopt, will survive can mm. want so that's that that's natural that's natural selection so i'm happy because like the, the life music came back on trail because yeah. that was a problem for a moment you know since since uh, youtube and all these like uh, online shows started to exist like so many so many people they just decided to stay home and watch it and you know been sitting and drinking a beer than to meet people, meet friends, and just just to enjoy the show in the real, you know. Mm. And I'm happy that this came back because this is real metal. You know, you, you, of course, like watching a video or something is all right, but it, metal is pretty special. And you know, there's no music like this, which is like so much dedicated to playing live, you know, and on stage. You know? And uh, so I'm I'm really really glad that this this uh, situation came back and like normal <laughs> life, you know, and became mm. normal again, you know. Yeah, I know you, you may have answered, inadvertently answered my next question because from my perspective as a fan, one of the greatest accomplishments that I can, I can issue to you outside of milestone albums like De Profundis, you know, enduringly influential albums like that, is your staying power and the fact that, yes, you are a band that brings it to the live arena. You've always been very consistent in the live arena. But for, for you, Pete, what, what do you think gives you the greatest sense of accomplishment when you look back over the 40 years of Vader? I, I think I already mentioned that before. And... Uh... We still active bands, we still exist, and we still have fans around the world. And mm. uh, I wish every band, you know, to have uh, such a loyal and crazy fans like Vader has, you know. And, uh, and uh, you know, it's, so we're proud of them. And, uh, you know, it's like, a, it's not going to be too much if I say that we do exist because of them. You know, because like without response, any music and especially Vader, like would be just dead. That'd be dead metal, not death metal, you know. <laughs> so, uh, and uh, again, uh, Vader would place for a next and the next generation of metalheads enjoying him. And that, uh, that's a huge, huge success, much more than having, you know, the Rolls Royce in, in the garage and be on the first pages on a, on a magazine. So, you know, we're not maybe the band, because of the music, let's say, we're not like, like we, we did not achieve uh, like Behemoth did, you know, but, uh, mm. you know, they are more, you know, with the style and uh, the show, you know, uh, and they, they fit totally in the proper time with the spectro. It's a pretty good band, you know. They were working hard for what they have, and uh, maybe we do not have that, you know, level. But trust me, I don't feel that we have like less of respect or um, a response on music we do. Yeah. You know? yeah. So, uh, so we, I always try just to keep away from any competition with all the bands, you know, because this is pretty natural and you like it or not it means just too many factors you know and uh, mm. the good thing is if you can play for people they're still happy and they still write to you how happy they are and how much they you know wait for uh, the next album or the next visit you know so mm. that's that's the best you know so it means that Vader after all these four decades 
uh, it's not a band of a season or a band of a local, you know, it's like a local band or something, which is, we can uh, give power and energy and uh, enjoy people around the world with different religions, different mentality, different languages, you know, uh, in the same way. And uh, that is the huge success of the band, I think. And uh, yeah, I just can I always say appreciate. I, I I will never find enough many thanks and thanks and thanks to the fans who are actually who kept us alive. You know, for all mm. these decades. You know. Transversely, though, is there anything about your career you'd do over again, or you'd do differently? If I would. If I could, <laughs> yeah. If you could, but yeah. Hypothetically speaking, no. I, you know, I'm. I think like everything. It's maybe because it's easy to think this way. You know, mm. I don't think I should, and I don't think I would like just to change anything in the past. You know, because if I would, I don't know what would be an effect of that. So uh, I really like to watch in the front. You know, instead of watching in the back. You know. Uh, I respect the history. I respect what we did, especially uh, after I know how how hard times they were for Vader and for us. It was not easy, trust me. Mm. But if we survived and we're here, I would like to see to the future and what's what's going to happen. Then, uh, what if I could change something in the past? Past is already behind us, so it doesn't make sense just to think this way, you know. We're here, yeah, and that's it. Yeah, I couldn't imagine that there would be anything that you 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 would need to change from that perspective because of the success of the band. And uh, we we have spoken about this in the past, but you, you are one of the first ever extreme metal outfits globally. Okay, given you started forty years ago, and I know the band's sound has evolved. It wasn't strictly death metal forty years ago, but I've also spoken to Max Cavalera about this. But two of the most important globally recognised extreme metal bands, that being Vader and Sepultura, evolved outside of the West in in very different circumstances than say what Metallica or Megadeth had to endure. Has that is that something you've given a lot of thought to? No, it actually, uh, you're right, because uh, Sepultura and Vader, uh, they had connections, like, between, even if if we know that Sepultura is from far Brazil and we are from far Poland, but uh, the Sepultura was a huge, huge uh, surprise for our business after uh, they released uh, 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 schizophrenia and they just showed to the world how extreme they are and how much energy this band has, you know, on stage. And, and uh, Vader and Vader was actually the reason and I, Poland, because we are from Poland, from a different part of the world, which was just rising up after, uh, after the communism fell down. And uh, actually Eric, and I know that because like we were like talking mm. about that years, years after that, they tried to find a band who will be something like Sepultura was for Metal Blade uh, in the U.S. And uh, actually, they they uh, they thought that Poland and after they heard our demo tape, Morbid Drake, uh, which released in '90, and they found it like extremely like, different and and unreal. If they knew uh, the situation of Poland and uh, how the Poland is, that was surprising, surprising for so surprising for for them, and uh, and the main reason why they just wanted to have Vader under the wings, you know, and that was a huge beginning, the real beginning for Vader, and a huge change mm. for us. And then the story lost the connection between Vader and Sepultura because Sepultura had no problem with actually the connection in English and they were in touch with level. They, they, they gave so many interviews, they were like available. We were not. And yeah. that was the main yeah. reason why Eric gave up, you know, like actually nobody of us could speak, you know, good enough English just to communicate and to give like a, something like regular interviews like we do now. Hmm. 
and the uh, uh, connection, like to leave Poland, I took much time and nerves to have a passport and just to have, a, a, you know, the permission to go outside, you know, with everything. Uh, the phone interview, forget. So nobody of us had the phone, even the like regular phone line. Mm. Uh, I I had to use a phone in a hotel nearby if I wanted to talk to somebody. And like the the, the cellular phones, they came later. But you know the prices and you know the costs were forget that was just out of question. You know, nobody mm. had had even like a ten percent of money to cover that. You know, mm. and you know all this situation like the economical and like logistics were just out and and. Uh, and the Eric, they, they didn't, they did, they did not know how to promote the band. They, they, you know, they they couldn't. It was just not real. That's why they gave up. You know, after that, you know, and uh, and uh, Sepultura actually, they they found the perfect spot and uh, very good support. You know, and uh, we had little support, but we had no like uh, abilities. You know, and all these logistics and things I just mentioned before and uh, so we had to just turn back to the local area and start again in our own of course that was much easier because after after the first after the debut album uh, released by so huge record company in England so that was much much easier to to gain next level and just to, to survive and just to com- to to continue to work Depra Fundis was the second album you know and uh, yeah. that's the that's the answer you know that was that was our answer for the problems. Yeah, but you know, actually, uh, when when that this came out, it was not that good. You know, um, it had not that good response. It came no, a little bit later. Yeah. yeah, and uh, but you know, but later never. <laughs> and and yeah. today, I'm really happy if, uh, if I like you, like you, you. You mentioned the De Profundis among such a great titles like Outer Madness or Slowly Roar. It's, it's hard. It's, uh, it's hard to imagine it to me. Mm. Uh, and uh, you know, I you know, I, I never argue with people who just like it or not. Uh, <coughs> I was never able to to uh, judge the music we create because it's not us who judge about music. It's just our fans. And uh, that's why, of course, I'm happy if 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 the album was, you know, so good for fans, you know, and they they they, they you know they like it. But you know, this is just the next album. It's like nobody knows how the album is going to be and uh, how the the fans going to take it you know, hmm. after it will be released. So. All right. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Hey, you mentioned uh, earache in there. I'm always fascinated to talk to artists that have had some interactions with uh, Al Dawson, but notably Digby. Now, I'm paraphrasing here, but Mortis told me that he'd rather burn in hell than ever deal with him again. And that sentiment <laughs> that has been echoed by a lot of people, I've got to say. How's yeah, how it for it, you? Yeah. It, it was uh, a little problem with Eric, and I think many, many bands, those bands uh, who released uh, so legendary titles, so legendary albums under their wings, they have problems. And the problem is uh, they have uh, uh, the rights for actually everything. Yeah. And uh, I remember, I remember like a few years ago, uh, like five years ago, actually. Uh, so we wanted to uh, uh, make a re-edition of the debut album, The Album Incantation. Mm. And we had also this unknown and very enigmatic uh, first uh, recording session from Sunlight Studios in Sweden that was mm. never released because we did not really like the sound. And so uh, all these... Uh, uh, the Ultimate Incantation fans know as, as the Vader album was recorded uh, later in England in Rhythm Studios, yes, of course it's the same uh, the same setup, uh, but uh, the sound is different. You know, that thing. Mm. So we wanted to give the, to the fans like the original original uh, re- version recordings plus that unknown uh, unknown version, and they really wanted to to make it to buy a license from Eric, you know, from Eric, but. Uh, 
they started just to to just you know to to tread us or just just to uh, to warn us about uh, about the the rights and you know and things like that the law and things and we didn't you know we didn't didn't want it to do problems but we did not know that this is that bad situation you know and yeah. then we took a look on on the contract and really it's, it was bad it means like they uh, they have rights for life actually for all the titles and mm-hmm. probably they live from that because they had so many yeah. great you know i I can't complain, you know, because Eric actually they they pull us out, you know, from Poland, and uh, they gave us uh, the the life chance to show up, you know. They 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 were professional, you know. We had huge tours. Uh, we support like in Europe and US. Uh, it is video clip in MTV, which is huge, like uh, achievement in Poland for fans, you know, back in nineties. And, you know, that was actually the promotion. So we, you know, Vader maybe was was a little known among the underground metalheads after we uh, sending we were sending out the demo tapes uh, since 89. But that was just underground. But since we hit the road, we played with Boltrower and D-Side or Suffocation, yeah. which were like huge names. So mm-hmm. we could show up. We could show up to people and they saw us in it. In a flash, and they know that the Vader, oh, these guys, are good on stage, you know, and that was the beginning for us. You know? So, of course, I I wish to give fans the original Ultimate, and uh, uh, for a moment I was complaining about that, but all in all, all together plus minus, so, you know, this is just a story, you know. So what we yeah. do, what we did, was just to uh, release something we called Dark Age. And which is like a, the, the same songs, different title, different cover art, but still made by the same artist and uh, just different recording sessions, just a compilation of the songs to make something, you know, to yeah. uh, uh, to give uh, for a fans uh, something fresh for 25th anniversary. Yeah. So that, that, that's how we did, you know. <laughs> it was maybe a little bit like showing middle finger, to Eric, uh, which maybe it was, but what could we do? We really, we had keep, trust me, we're trying hard just to do it and anyways, to pay a lot of money just to release a limited edition or something. No. <laughs> so that's all we could do. You know, I'm, I'm not a fan just to re edit, so like to make the same album in a different way, but actually that was the only way just to do something, right? Okay. So yeah, fair <laughs> enough. Yeah, yeah. No, it's, it's always fascinating talking to the artists, uh, particularly legacy artists like yourself, uh, like Vader, about the relationship there with Digby. Uh, no idea why why it's it is like that, why it's so difficult with him. But thank God, Deep Profundus wasn't recorded through and released through Earache. Um, as I said, maybe if we had like in a better uh, connection, the the literal connection with Eric. Mm-hmm. Uh, that performance probably would be out uh, on the yeah. doings, but <laughs> speaking of which, the, if we if we if we did, then we couldn't record re- release it now. No, probably that's <laughs> so the, problem. the same yeah. problem, like 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 with with uh, with uh, David Al. So all in all, maybe that was something that had to happen. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, and I was spoken to Bill Steer about some of the early Carcass recordings. He told me they haven't received a cent. So, and 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 Mike Browning from Nocturnus is well. Mike, uh, the, uh, my opinion, okay, just putting it out there, they ruined Nocturnus because they told Mike Browning that he wasn't allowed to sing from behind the kit. They had to get a front man in. That's why there's such a difference between the key, which is an all time classic album, and the one that Thresholds oh, yeah. is it. I think you know Thresholds is not bad, but. The Key is just a fantastic album. And we were deprived of one of the all-time great shredder death metal virtuosos and Mike Davis, you know, influenced Trey in Morbid Angel. And, uh, yeah, you know, so I think, many, I think... I think many bands just turn into, like, too much progressive music, I think. Hmm. The same, I, I think, the pretty much the same situation was with, uh, the next example, A Pestilence from Holland. 
Yeah, sure. Yeah. I remember like the consuming impulse or, or like the testimony, like, uh, great albums, but then apparently they turned into some music, which is like to me, because of course it's for, for, for some like uh, fans, uh, you know, the band started to exist after they released like his music, but this is, you know, uh, but uh, to me, it was just too much into to artistic, you know, way, and they forget a little bit yeah. about the roots and the the root the 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 main uh, the meaning of metal. <laughs> if you know what I mean. No, I understand. Yeah, and I like can't uh, see bands there, were, that. Yeah. there were there were more, there were more bands like that, but all in all, you know, this is music, and and uh, uh, Nocturnus, you know, they. Which is great, like they still do exist. You know, we met Mike, you know, in, in Florida mm. a couple of times, and he's a so nice person. You know, it's, he is, it's, yeah, it's just a, we, we even shared a stage in, in Tampa once. You know, it was it was good. You know, this this is you know they they record the classic album, and uh, that's enough. You know, to be to, to be great band. You know, it's in my opinion. You know, and yeah. if they record it, you know, it's the same. If I compare Vader so we recorded something with the, the album called it The Beast you know uh, which is of course still Vader but that was like like a bad times for Vader and uh, uh, something I wanted to do which is to to make the album a little bit closer and more influenced by more classic sounds maybe more classic metal than mm -hmm. that uh, I mean classic fresh metal or something like with this this more groovy riffs I thought maybe it will work. I was wrong. And uh, right after that, we came back to the trail and uh, we just uh, recorded like another pretty much Vader album, which was uh, The Art of War and A Person in Black, the next one. But uh, sometimes you have to, you have to do something, uh, get a little bit step aside to understand that, well, you shouldn't do that. But some musicians, some people, they think they they can, because why? Why they can? They can, of course, everybody can. Hmm. Uh, but uh, I do the same situation like with Morbid Angel, you know, which is one of my totally favorite bands, like in death metal ever, you know. And all these four albums, you now they recorded like, five albums, recorded like uh, it's it is and it will be a classic to me. But all these, you know, uh, all these experimental music, I call, you know, what happened later, it was just too much to me. And uh, and I know that many fans uh, who who were adoring them for the music they created, for the chaos they made, like, that was very special style, you know. It was like a natural, like, evolution of extremity. Extremity. And uh, then they just wanted to make another revolution. You can't make revolution twice, you know. They, no, you I can try, it but it never yeah. it never works. It never works, and uh, I never understood that. No, I I knew those guys. We we spent uh, a month on tour in nineteen ninety eight, and it's great people and great musicians, good time. And uh, I don't understand why what happened. You know, it's but it's not. Yeah, try what can I do? I, 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 I still adore the music. I still love Morbid Angel. Like, I still have the albums. I still have albums signed by them. Mm. And uh, I'm a fan. And uh, I just stayed with the album albums I like. And the others, I just leave for all those who like them better. But not me. Mm. I've I've had a very long conversation with Trey's mother for my podcast. So I'm not talking about anything now that isn't already out there. But Trey has Asperger's. So he lives on the spectrum, life on the spectrum. And I think he follows his own muse. And he may, and again, my opinion, I'm just saying, you know, I'm just phrasing, framing it this way for anybody who decides that they want to get at the keyboard afterwards, you know. But <laughs> Trey, 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 Trey follows his own muse. And sometimes that's to the detriment of his career. Um, and God knows what's going on with the group these days. Okay. Uh, 
But uh, the the last album was was you know I think they missed it on the last album. I think no, nobody who knew what they were talking about would accuse Eric Rutan of not being able to produce the album. And I've spoken to Eric uh, in detail about it as well. And uh, look, he he must have been under instruction from Trey to produce the album the way it sounds. There's no question. When I mean, Trey's the master captain of his own ship, that sort of thing. But yeah, yeah you just you just hope. Yeah, you just hope he can he can find a way to get back on track. To your point there, you, you mentioned, I'm trying to work out, this is a question for you in amongst all of that, what was the album that you feel like as though you, you veered too far from the Vader path, so to speak? What was that album called? Uh, you mean like the, the, the Vader yeah. album? Yeah, did, did you say you, did or, you mention you were, Vader. Yeah, yeah, vague. yeah, talking about Vader now. Was there an album there that you mentioned that you put too many classic riffs into, classic rock riffs or what have you? Was that what you were talking about? Sorry. I might have missed it. Might be my fault. Sorry. <laughs> Are you you mean the album I was talking about before? Uh, the, yeah, uh, just, the Beast. The Beast. Yeah, I was, yeah, that's it. Yeah, The Beast. Yeah, so The Beast. See, I thought that was a pretty good album because it has Deray from um I mean, uh, it's, uh, that's, it, that's the other thing, you know, which I like. Personally, because Vader and uh, with releasing all these albums uh, in all these years, uh, so we still have fans. <laughs> Sometimes I I totally enjoy the conversation between the fans uh, uh, when they say like, oh, they discuss which album is better and why. Mm. Because like I, I really like if uh, our fans, Vader fans, they they have their own favorite albums. And of course, maybe maybe there are still albums like like the Dapper from the Litany uh, or or Solid Madness, you know, which is like uh, a little bit higher, you know, in 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 this scale. But all the other albums, this still known, and even the Beast, you know, uh, for some people, it's pretty good album, you know, and they found something for them, and it's pretty good, you know. So uh, it means that. The album, even if it's not, it was not that popular and had not that good radius in the press, you know, in media, uh, the people do not care. If they found something interesting, they just take it. So this is great in the music, you know. And I think that that's a good thing in the music at all. You know, even mm -hmm. if the album, if, if everybody calls something bad, like like we, like I just did, like the, the let's say, uh, the the I the the most yeah, began was, I the album Divinium, Divinium and Saints, yeah. was yeah. was not uh, really good, but I'm sure that there's many people who really love this album for the beat, for the special difference, you know, and and that's all right, you know. And mm -hmm. uh, same with the beast. You know, I I mentioned that before. I do not judge the Vader album. It's just like each one that was the same important to me, and uh, it's better or worse or whatever. That's all about fans, you know. They they judge and they like it or not. You know, that's pretty fair, you know. And it's not me. Like many times, many times, a bit like people uh, were asking me, like, which is like my favorite Vader album. Like, I can't say, but really. Like, like it's it's a part of my life, uh, and uh, each one was part of my life, better or worse. Like sometimes, you know, this, this is each album is like a little little or more or less emotions of my life just put into music and uh, uh, like everybody I had bad better or worse days or months or years and that influences my emotions right and mm -hmm. that's why uh, the music on the albums might be different you know should be different yeah but uh, as I said I, I never judge I I always focus on something I like in music and uh, I, I understand the people who do the same, you know, yeah, towards it's just, Vader it's, music. Yeah. It's just interesting. I always thought that was one of the, I'm not saying a classic Vader album because I think there's the, there's a album that probably come before that. We've already talked a lot about Deep Profundus, for example. Uh, but, um, you know, classic usually is called something which is old. <laughs> usually oh. <laughs> those albums were recorded in the beginning. No, I'm right? not saying it in that way. <laughs> but, yeah, yeah, but I strongly believe that some of the new titles, uh, like Sodom Madness, let's say, will became will become a, a classic in the future for for the, for those uh, maybe newer generations of metalheads, of Vader maniacs, 
who enjoyed this album uh, for the future. Like they would kick this in mind, you know, more than what we recorded 30 years ago or something. You know well, it's I mean? interesting. All, all of your nuclear blast albums, I, don't, I know that the business side of things isn't the point, but still it's important. All of the nuclear blast albums have charted across the world. We're talking all of the major markets where metal would chart, Poland, Japan, Germany, um, and other parts of, of Europe. But most importantly, you've had you've had chart success in the United States, uh, starting with Necropolis. So I'm just looking here. Uh, at, at Wikipedia, and mate, that's I mean that's a significant accomplishment, really. I mean it has to you, even even with your uh, very grounded outlook, you must be very impressed with some of those some of those numbers. You know that's that's the only reason uh, why we're so happy to be in Nuclear Blast. You know, first they are fans; they're not just business guys who just do not care about what's going on, just about like uh, you know charts and you know money or whatever they do of course because that they job but not only not just they like family you know and uh, mm. yeah, i remember when i met uh, uh, these guys in the office in germany for the first time i was i was really really uh, shocked you know how it works you know i met like friends you know who enjoy the mu- music metal like like me and yeah. the difference is just like I was a musician and they were like guys who promote like the music, like, you know, and, and that's one of those reasons, I think, um, why the albums recorded from Nuclear Blast, they were like noticed like by fans and, and the media, you know, because they, they were working on that and they still keep working on that just to, to give the music, you know, like, like, even if, even if, we did not bring him like a gold album or something like that. They trust me. They still like feel like, like really big respect to to Vader, and uh, we feel big respect for what they do. And uh, I'm really really happy that we found the place in, in Nuclear's family because this is this is really really great thing. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's not just. Great, it's, yeah. I'm not just talking that because we are under wings of Nuclear Blast, because really this is different. Like to be. Among the friends you you talking to, you can just share emotions about the music or the, something like that, and uh, and uh, not just about like what your plans or like what you're doing. You know what I mean? It's just like mm. really, really good. You, I, I really wanted to be in, in a in a company that uh, like a bunch of friends and metalheads as well. You know, not yeah. just guys who wear the nice suits and selling in music, like whatever, you know. Oh, it's ridiculous, isn't it, that when that stuff comes up? Yeah. I can't understand, particularly in extreme metal, why you, you wouldn't be a fan if you were involved in the business side of it because it's it's too hard to graft. You know, you've got to connect. It's got uh, to be very honest. You know, but there were people or there are people who can connect it, connect business with uh, just uh, respect and uh, enjoying. Mm. That's, that's a pretty good combination. <laughs> Mm-hmm. All right, I'll make this my last question for you. I've got, saying I've got to ask, and I'm going to end on a high note here. I know that the band's biography, Total War, came out in 2014, I think it was, but mate, when is your biography coming out? Because I know people would love to read that. My biography? Mm-hmm. Uh, no, first, first I need like find enough time just to sit down and uh, start writing. <laughs> it's like... Maybe, 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 maybe I will. Like, the first thing I need to do is just to release the Total War, the Vader's biography, which is a huge part of my life. Hmm. And actually, it is my biography as well in English, you know, so uh, so yeah. everybody can enjoy. No, no, because this, this album was, yeah, this book was uh, released in uh, 2014, just in Polish. And it's not available now at the moment. And uh, uh, we also we also translated this. We were about to release this one in Russian. <laughs> then you know the situation is it's, it's not really good for like releasing uh, the book in Russian called Total War. You know, <laughs> it's just not these days. So we just <laughs> so 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 we kept the idea and uh, and we just wait for like better political situation in this uh, in this way. And uh, but we are working on the English edition and this is almost done. 
and uh, just uh, we are waiting for uh, next year because uh, Jarek Schubrich, the, the author, mm. who collected all these interviews, and actually he's a writer of the books, uh, of the book. And uh, we're working on the new edition of the book with uh, with one chapter added, The Last Decade of Vader, which was not, uh, which was just, uh, which will be like, like a bonus for the new edition. Mm -hmm. it, it will be some appendix as well, like like full discography and the, the, the list of, of shows we did in the past, like, well, like at least all those we remember, those I got on my list, blacklist. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so we plan to release this, uh, and this should be released in English as well uh, next year, mm. uh, when, when Vader will turn 40. Okay. Hard to well, yeah. <laughs> well, in a way, but you know, you, you've you've earned that title. You know, uh, you've earned that length of time that you've been out there. You know, and to be and when I say legacy band, please take that as a compliment. You're an enduringly successful legacy band, and I'm sure this biography will be well worth well worth it. But uh, but I think also too, just consider your own story because you'd have a wonderful story to share with people. You mentioned that you know you grew up oh. as a young fella in the Iron Curtain. You know, I mean, it really didn't collapse until you know, mid nineties there. So you spent well, half of your life in that scenario. You know, that's, you uh, that, that's, that's what I said, you know, in, in, in the book, in the total war, this Vader biography, actually the, the, uh, the biggest part of that, and actually something we focus more at. Uh, so it was, was the beginning of Vader and uh, the first decade, because that was the most interesting, especially for a new generation. It's also in Poland, because this is so this abstractive, you know, for <laughs> for some people today. Uh, how was the situation and how hot it was, but how happy we were having nothing and given what we had, what we were able to in those hard years. And, uh, and this is the reason why I, I am waiting for English edition of, of the book, because this will be definitely also pretty much interesting for for people living outside of Poland, not just metalheads, because for metalheads, yeah. this is a, the story, they know a lot, but I'm sure they will find something they never they never knew about Vader. <laughs> you know, there's so many crazy things about that, about <laughs> it's just long history. And, uh, but for people who just wanted to know uh, how was life in Poland, how was life behind the Iron Curtain in, in eighties and nineties, uh, for teenagers, young guys who is just looking for something so crazy like metal music, you know. So mm. something interesting. So as I said, like not just for metal fans, just yeah, great. also yeah, for yeah, those yeah, who are interesting. Story. How how the life was in Poland, you know, in eighties, <laughs> because yeah, it's yeah. like really much about that in, in the book. I'm glad you focused on that because that is the story. Ultimately, yes, you're a band, but we already know about that. You're a great band, successful band, killer albums. But what about you? What about you as people? What did you have to endure in order for the band to be a success? And I'm so glad you focused on that aspect of it. You know, it's life is life. And, you know, I always tried, you know, of, of course, I, I was not that same Peter when I was teenage teenage guy uh, like now because the, after all those years, I'm, uh, I traveled the world like so many times around and, uh, you know, my experience is really hard. So I, today, I, I still got that, you know, that, that fire burns in the heart, you know, that little anger inside that I wouldn't be able to write metal music if I wouldn't have it, I think. But, uh, I still wanted to impress people with life, even if a hard life. Sometimes mm -hmm. I even think if life is easy, life makes us mm, like a zombies, you know, like yeah. without motivation, you know. So it's like I don't want to. I don't want to be like. Uh, I don't want to sound like uh, I tried to explain people that our life should be like painful, not not like that. But uh, maybe from the other side, like no problem should stop but it, it stop us if we really want to do something we should just keep going and uh and, and and enjoy that you know don't give up never and actually that's short shortly speaking all about that you know mm. if i can yeah. say 
No, that's fair enough. Yeah. Well, I mean, you know, the motto, uh, you know, the begin that that's the, the, the little motto. Uh, yeah. The beginning of the book, that was motto written by, but actually by by Eric, for the author. Uh, it's all about this. He was like speaking about a guy who who was just dreaming about something, uh, which was like not available and probably is not going to be available. Mm. And uh, then he tried to say uh, to people like, uh, "Does it sound stupid? But imagine if he succeed, you know? And <laughs> no, what now? And then the whole story starts, you know." And so uh, he explains and uh, all this hard way of Vader to achieve this uh, the position of today and uh, how hard we are working to have respect from people around the world from the country it was just like 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 an alien land for many especially in the west part and uh, I think this is just this is like all which is like between the lines all the times, you know, when, when you read the book. Uh, but that's this interesting part, I think. Because it's, it's, it's definitely, even if I was reading that, <laughs> I found something which was just like, I was reading this story, which is part of my life, like, 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 like a criminal or some, <laughs> some, some like a, a, like a mix of fantasy book and, uh, and a history book or fiction or nonfiction together. <laughs> funny but you're like wow that's my life that's it yeah. right there in hard print. to believe <laughs> mm. yeah hard to believe. Well, I, i'd love to read it yeah are you, are you doing you're doing a version as well as a print version hopefully so um yeah i've i've just released a book too and uh yeah it was really interesting i sold more print than i did e-copies so metal fans tend to go for the physical product i've found no doubt you found the same thing mm. Yeah. All right, mate. Thanks very much for the chat. I really appreciate it. It's uh, always a pleasure to catch up awesome. with you. Yeah, I, I really appreciate you giving me the time. Uh, that's there, so. that's always a pleasure to me. So thanks, thanks for that. You know, and uh, well, hopefully, as you uh, see, you know, the, if you see, I'm like when we started to <laughs> chat, like I, I get some lights, you know, and I, I, I am like, a, I got like a face and hands, you know. <laughs> It's I did a bit like that. that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You're just this face appearing out of the blackness now, you know. So I don't know, for I'll me, it's now getting I'll light. <laughs> Are you you're out of the dark. You got more yeah. and more light now. I wish you could see it. If I could turn it around, you'd see that it's pretty overcast. But yeah, there's certainly the sun has come up since we started talking. Of course, it has. Um, I strongly believe that I will in uh, October. <laughs> I, I can. Because that's the time we, we plan the visit. <laughs> I look forward to it. Yeah, I've got a mate, and mate and I are really looking forward to the gig, actually. Um, so I'll definitely be there. And uh, if there's an opportunity to have a chat and maybe have a beer, mate, I'd like that too. But uh, mate, no doubt a lot of people want to do that. So yeah, <laughs> no okay. worries, Pete. All right, thanks very much for the chat again. Appreciate it, mate. So thanks a lot, and see you in October. See you in October. Bye. Thanks, bro. Cheers. Well, there he is, ladies and gents, the great Peter Vivcharek from Vader. What a fella. If you enjoyed that chat, there are some just like it over at scarsandguitars.com. And whilst you're there, if you enjoy listening to the podcast, perhaps you like reading books because I happen to have written one, Scars and Guitars, Volume 1, Conversations from the World of Hard Rock, Heavy Metal and Beyond can be yours. If you click on the link in the banner, It'll take you to a marketplace, all the usual suspects, Google, Amazon, Apple, Barnes & Noble, Angus & Robertson, they're all there. Download a sample, and if you do complete the purchase, if you do want to read the rest of the book after you've had a bit of a read of the first few chapters, please do hit me up and let me know because I want to thank you personally. My name is Andrew Mackay-Smith, and I'm the host of the Scars & Guitars podcast series. Here's a few more words about my book. Until next time. Have a great one. This is Eric Rutan of Cannibal Corpse. You are listening to the Scars and Guitars podcast with Andrew McKay-Smith. I've been the host of the Scars and Guitars podcast since 2017. The first musician I interviewed for the show was David Vincent from Morbid Angel, and things have just snowballed from there. In all, I've posted almost 650 podcast episodes featuring conversations with many of the leading lights of rock heavy metal and beyond. It just got to a point where I thought, I need to write a book about all this, so that's exactly 
what I did. In Scars and Guitars Volume 1, you'll read a heap of deep reveals and commentary, such as Des Fafara talking about Cold Chamber and why the band will never return. You know, if you're a, a band just starting out, you need to hear me. Do not start a band with partners. Ever. Yeah, wise words there. Sage advice, mate, for anybody. Don't ever, because I, I can't go do Cold Chamber right now unless I get others involved. Phil Anselmo talks about the episode in his career, which gives him the greatest sense of accomplishment. I think the staying power of the, the fans and the staying power of the... I, of the songs, you know, whether it's Pantera, Down, or Super Joint, the fans remember the songs. Alex Skolnick from Testament confirms that, yes, playing the guitar in Ozzy's band is anything but an ordinary gig. Will Silent Oz from Demu Borgir write a book? Pa from Sabaton gives advice to people who want to start a band. Look at the team around you, look at the bandmates. If, uh, if the guys want to be on the stage, then it's all cool. If the guys want to be backstage, then it's not going to be cool. Current and former members of Cradle of Filth discuss the band's seminal 90s material. Read about the reaction to George Lynch and Mark from Suicide Silence's comments when they throw shade at then-President Donald Trump. We have this idiotic monster, you know, this egotistical, self-aggrandizing, complete piece of shit in there. I, 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 just, I just can't understand how we've gotten to this place. And yeah, we kicked a hornet's nest with Sepultura. Percussive overlord Gene Hoagland talks about recording with Chuck Schuldiner. Chuck was always, um, you know, he was, he was very, you know, very open-minded and, and he was into having his, his musicians that were playing with him just reach out for, for the best stuff that they had. Phil Campbell from Motorhead discusses what it takes to get sober. John Five answers his critics who dismiss his tenure with Marilyn Manson. You know, my name is John Five and Manson gave me that name and um, I had some of the best years of my life in that band and, and learned a lot. And we get the lowdown on Trey Zagtoth from those who would know, including his mother. All across Scars and Guitars Volume 1, there are moments of tension, relief, tragedy, exhilaration, and throughout it all, you'll obtain insight that I believe no one else has managed to obtain from many of your favourite artists. So treat yourself. Scars and Guitars Volume 1 is currently available as an ebook with a print edition on the horizon. Follow the links attached and download a sample. I'm sure you'll be compelled to read the whole book.